Okay, so tonight's session uh, is focusing on uh, the role description. And as outlined, I think it was Emily that was saying it, um, this is uh, something new to the PPP program uh, as a result of the feedback from yourselves in our review of the program uh, in 2022. So that's specifically what we're looking at tonight is the role descriptions around the PDP. So what are we done today? So everybody's here. And I know there's a lot of new people on here tonight that weren't on the induction webinar. So don't worry about that. Um, there's the PDP learning portals. For everybody's here, we have a portal. It's where all the resources of the PDP are available. So all the recordings, all the webinars, all the resources, everything is accessible there on the PDP e-learning portal. I might just go to that at the end, just before you're aware. But when I send out the email, I'll attach a file. I allow you to go through the simple steps and how to access that. And you can access that at any stage, at any time. And what we'll do is, we'll, as we go along through the PDP program, we'll add stuff onto that all the time. So we'll layer that um, PDP portal, portal throughout the year. If you did not make the original uh, induction webinar that we did on the 21st and 11th, if you didn't make that, don't worry about it. We actually record that webinar and that's um, available to view on the portal, okay? So we went through the what's and all and what the PDP program is about. We went over through an overview of it. We actually gave feedback. So I know a lot of people would love to hear what, well, what came back from the feedback. We actually went through that on that night as well. What came back from the, the review? And we also have the frequently asked questions on the PDP as well. So if I don't cover everything or if we as a group don't cover everything tonight, if you go back onto that induction webinar, it's only about, say, 40, 45 minutes long. Give a listen to it. It goes through everything. So, but again, lads, if you have any questions or queries tonight, just throw them into the chat and we'll be happy to answer as much as we can as we go through. Okay. So, as I said, all that's on the e-learning portal. I might just show you that before I leave tonight. So, just to describe tonight, our outcomes are, well, we're going to go through just very shortly what the PDP is again, because like I said, there's about 140 people on here tonight. A lot of them from the registration that I looked through. So I looked through the registration for tonight. A lot of them are new to the PDP, probably don't have a full understanding of it. So I'll just give you a, a, a vague summary of it. Again, if you want to go in more detail, we'll have the documents and the and, and recording afterwards from the induction. But we'll just go over that. We'll go through the, the roles and responsibilities of, um, um, for the various PDP stakeholders. So who, what are your role is? in making sure it's a success for your, for your county. And then we look at obviously at, at the next steps on the PDP. So what is the PDP? So look, I'm gonna show you a video that we did. Uh, it was actually up in, in Connacht at the, at the festival day uh, with Sarah. You've probably seen this already. I'm gonna play it and Claudia, you might just give me a thumbs up if you can hear it, if that's okay. Um, I think I've, I've shared the sound, but you can let me know otherwise if not. In the county of Galway, there's 200 girls, 200 girls. Brilliant. It benefited coaches certainly and it benefited Sorry. The players. I mean, look, the girls are absolutely delighted. I suppose this is where the dropout age is. You know, like this is make or break. Will they be here next year? This might be like, oh, I got a chance to play. I'm going to keep going for my club. The feedback has been absolutely brilliant that uh, girls have grown confident. Girls that mightn't start on their club team, but they get to go out and be given a chance. They get to score or they get to play with different clubs. Like, I presume they're going to remember this for the rest of their lives. I definitely will anyway. What they really want for them is to put on the Galway jersey just once, even if it's just once, and run out into the pitch and say that they have played for Galway. You've seen there this morning with the girls that came here, the excitement around it. And there is no pressure. Yeah, we go to training, we try to make it as fun as we can. And it takes all the pressure off the girls to just enjoy the day and, and be part of the Galway outfit. I noticed a change in their attitudes. They've shown a lot more interest, I thought and development of themselves. They're keener to come to train and I notice. Even though like there is no cuts or nothing, they're still pushing themselves to be the best they can be when they get there. And already talk about when are we playing again, when are we playing again. Each coach that came brought in new skills. They'd bring in different activities so for us to do. The score doesn't matter. So there's not really a pressure of who wins or who loses. It's kind of just having fun. It was exciting because you've done so many weeks of training. You work so hard to come out and play for Sligo. It's the best feeling ever. This is her first year being involved in it and she finds it fantastic. She couldn't sleep last night, you know what I mean, with the excitement. Like, you know, there's all the girls probably, you know, they're, they're buzzing and, you know, it's only the first step. It's the beginning of a, a, a hopefully a great journey for them as they as progress with their football career. If they don't enjoy it, they won't, won't, won't keep coming. So you've got to create an environment where they feel that they belong, that there's friendships, that there's trust, whatever and they will, they will progress as their football career goes on. We work catering for girls of all ability. As a coach, you're very good to see other activities, other drills, other games going on. And for the girls themselves, they were 
play in which some players they might have met on the field as opposition players. They get to broaden their friendship circles, they're getting to know people. So it's all about getting out on the pitch, playing as much football, getting as much contact as you can. The development is about learning and, you know, picking up little bits of skills, picking up things here and there and meeting friends. Everyone wants to come here. Everyone wants to go, you know, to Sense of Excellence, get playing on the pitches, get playing games and be involved. Like, you know, not necessarily the best players maybe in the club, but just girls in the club to get them in and give them a chance, give them a feel for, for county and for development. Their, their cornerbacks are coming up getting scores. I think that, from a development point of view, is very good for them. It was great just to come out, and it's not that it's like that competitive, it's just everyone goes out and has fun. In the development, we'd be like throwing the ball across the ground and picking it up and everything, so you're able to use those skills here today. And it's just a bit of a challenge to get your football better. It's great to be able to do that to improve my football, because someday I want to play for the county. I hope that will give you a flavour of, of the PDP programme, um, everyone. So that video, and that video is available, uh, it's on our YouTube channel. So if you want to use that as a, as a promotional tool in your county for the programme, please do so, please utilise that. Um, so it's just nice to hear from the different perspectives of what the PDP is. So basically, guys, what is it really? It's research-led. So like we listen to research, we listen to what's going on in other sports, and we also kind of apply to, to our own sport. It's all about the long-term development. So it's about, you know, how do we keep girls, I say, having a sustain that love for the game, really, in particular that, that, that 13 to 17 age bracket that we're looking at. And, and, and if there's girls involved in your PDP program, the player development program, we wanted to experience positive ex an environment, a very positive coaching environment that you're there to guide, develop, improve them so they continue that love. And that's what we want to go after, a real positive coaching environment. There's no trills and frills with it. It's very simple in its nature. And just remove, remove those competing interests of, you know what, selection, deselection. You know, if you come to this program, we're going to provide you with the best coaching experience you can, uh, that we can give you. And you know what? You'll go away a better player. That's that's all we're trying to achieve. And it's all about coaching, really about good coaching, good coaching, girls in, in, enjoying a good coaching environment. And it's all about a continuous improvement, continuous improvement for your coaches and also for players that they feel they're improving and they're getting better. And that's what we're trying to achieve. So again, that's all this we've gone through numerous times and it's in the induction webinar again. It's about inclusive. It's about giving girls an opportunity. It's about, you know, uh, players being exposed to probably a, a, a higher quality coaching. You know, and if, you know, what that looked like in your county, that's up to you in terms of how you go after that, in terms of your own standards and your criteria. Opportunity for players to develop, improve and develop. That's simply what it is. You're coming in here to be, you know, to improve and develop. That hopefully that when you lead this in X amount of weeks time, you're going to go back to your clubs as a better footballer. And there's no, you know, selection, deselection around that. Um, and it's also an opportunity for coaching. I always say this, in the environment you're coaching, you're always looking to develop as a coach. Yes, there'll be huge challenges involved with the player development program. It's huge challenges involved in anywhere that you go, really. But it's all about coach development. Can I improve myself as a coach? Can I take myself outside the comfort zone? And that's what we're really going after regarding the, the PDP. Um, so, as I said, it's not about training for something down the road. So we're not preparing for an inter-county team. We're not preparing the best girls, looking for the third, best 30, 40 girls. We're just, you know, girls are coming to focus on becoming better players. Um, and it's not just focusing on better players or the, or the good players in counties, about those coachable players. Players that want to come to you and say, come here. I want to come. I want to learn. I want to develop. You know, give me that opportunity. Let me go home and let, let's get those feelings that those girls had in the in the in the uh, Connacht Festival Day. Let's see, can we achieve those sort of feelings by the players that they go home and they feel good about themselves? So it's not only about the player, it's about the coach, the player, and the whole environment as a whole. And that's what we're trying to go after that system. And I always say to you guys, if you can run a very good PDP in your county, you've done it. You that's what you're aiming to achieve. Just a good, well-run PDP in your own county. If the players experience a real positive experience with you in your county, in my, in my opinion, you've achieved something really, really good. And that's what you're going after, okay? Here's a visual. Like, what we've increased because of the review. So last year was, um, I think maximum was eight, eight visits. Now it's up to 12. So we're going to give you 12 contact sessions that you're allowed with your, with your, with your, um, your players. But look at the difference here. So you had the inter-county on the right-hand side. So they're preparing for something. They're the top 30, 40 players. They're preparing for something, an outcome. It could be uh, to win the first game of the championship, win a provincial, win an RR, whatever it may be. Where the player development program is on the uneven you know, age groups, under 13, 15, 17. And it's just basically about bringing girls in for X amount of uh, uh, sessions, you know, and go to a few festival days, 
see can you improve that uh, improve and develop and that's it in the story so there's a real distinct uh, difference between you know i suppose that player development program and then you have the intercounty competitive setup uh, at the under 14 16 minor at a level so what does it look like? So we're saying now you're going to have 12 um, contact sessions. That's three months. So if you were to do one every week, that's three months, guys. That's a lot. You know, so it does take up a big chunk. And it's very important that the PDP program does not impinge in club activity. Um, so we'll say, okay, let's go. Okay, if you want more sessions, no problem at all. Let's go increase it to 12 contact sessions. Okay. Um, so one of these days will be your provincial or your national uh, festival days. Okay. So you're allowed to have 11 contacts. So if you want to have 11 contacts, it could be break down as two regional festival days and nine PDP sessions. It could be one regional festival day and 10 PDP sessions. Or, or you could just have 11 PDP sessions and just go to your regional or your Munster uh, or your Connacht or your Ulster or your Connacht um, or Leinster uh, festival day. So we've increased the contacts. Okay. So it's very important that we say, we listen to the feedback in terms of that. But I suppose keep it to that. Keep it to that session. There's no point continuing on because that's where you lose the, the edge. That's where you lose the enjoyment. That's where you lose the real quality about the program. So we're saying keep it to 12 sessions, okay? And, you know, doing really, really well. Doing really well. And if they want to come back for more, then great. They're going away with a real positive feeling about themselves. And sometimes in these sort of projects, when they want more, we do more. And then it seems to just lose its value. So just something to be aware of in what we're trying to achieve. So when is the best time of the year to run it for your county? And as I said, this depends on your county. It depends on your fixtures, your underage fixtures. It depends on your a lot of things. So we're saying it depends on your county. When you started and ended, it's really up to yourselves. Uh, once the full program is finished by the 1st of October. So we're putting a cutoff point to the 1st of October. Things should be really kind of wrapped up by then. So it must complete at least six weeks in advance of the provincial festival day. So what we're saying is, I'll show you the dates now in a few minutes. But we're saying if you're really serious about this, you should be starting at least six weeks in, in preparation for your festival day because there's nothing worse than just starting a week before, you know, going straight to festival day, and it just probably just clouds what you're trying to achieve. So we're saying use the festival days as an opportunity for your planning. And um, does it have to have it every week? No, it doesn't. It could be have once a month, once every two weeks. That's really up to yourselves. Does it have to finish on the festival day? No, it doesn't. The festival day could be part of your training program. So you could finish with one or two sessions afterwards if you want. So how it looks for you will depend on how it works for you, if that makes sense. But just be cognizant of the festival days and the dates. But one thing just be aware of, you'd need to start at least six weeks prior to have real quality in what we're trying to do. Well, can you just come in there just to give you a wee break? Can you that, that, that be your rest of the voice? Uh, we've said there about the contact sessions goes up to a maximum of 11 and minimum four, no, four uh, uh, sessions. If you don't, if you're your target and your head coach is, is seven or eight contact sessions, well, and say during the summer, coaches are in availability, players are away. So what if you miss a session or it, it wasn't penciled in for mid-August? It's it's not the end of the world, guys. This is a very relaxed uh, uh, coaching environment, very relaxed program, as William says. And the days, like I know, for example, in Ulster, our training days, we're going up two this year, William, we'll probably come on that later on. Like ours are in March. But that doesn't mean to say, right, you have to start the program in Throne or Fermanagh or Calvin, whatever the case may be. You don't have to start in April. Whenever it suits you and the availability of your coaches, and as we know, the, the amount of rain we had, and most fields are, are, are soft and waterlogged. So, do it as William says when it suits the needs of you I and mean, when you've got your house in order, guys. And again, we're here to support you along the way, whatever it happens, support you need to guide and get the best out of the programme for your county. And that's what it's about. Because you might find a gem, William, you just said, you might find a girl, maybe, geez, next year she could be, she could make the under-16 inter-county programme. Or in two years' time, that girl has a potential of being a minor, minor, a minor player. So, listen, there, there's added balance for everybody and the coaches as well, guys, as William will, will talk about here. It's, it's a great learning environment for you. Good opportunity to network at the provincial training days. Good opportunity to network tonight. Chat to people. Pick ideas. Pick each other's brains. Because every day is a learning day, William, to me. And to me, if, if you can gain knowledge off somebody else, that we know good information that might help you, maybe socially, technically, technically, whatever it is, to help you improve as a coach. And it's going to improve your girls. And it raises the standard of football within your county, I think. Club football, that is, but you're off there, winner. Right? Yeah, hundred percent. As outlined by Kieran, there, everyone, guys, the benefits, the benefits are huge. The benefits, the players who are coming into your sessions are going, to, they're going to enjoy it. 
like I was involved, lads, with the with the GA, and uh, you know when I came to ladies football, I was involved in, in regional setups like this. I was involved myself as a coach, as a coordinator, and I saw the value. It's catchy gas that you know, 15, 10 years later, I'm actually coaching those lads at, at senior level. You know, I said, so I've seen this and and the benefit of of this kind of approach and how it can really, really impact if done really well. And we speak about that. That's the main aim of tonight. We speak about that in a minute. But they could be coaches, I said, players, clubs. You know, let's come on, come on, guys. And I think we need to buy into clubs. We need, to, we need to link in with clubs. We need to engage with clubs. We need to get them to understand what is it you're trying to achieve and the role they play with you. And obviously the county is another huge aspect as we spoke, speak about in a few minutes in terms of their role and the role they play in making sure that, you know what, there's a synergy going on across the board and what you're trying to achieve. So I hope that kind of gives you a, 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 just a whistle top on what the program is about. And if you go into the PDP portal, we've done an induction. I've gone into more detail with the lads in terms of, you know, what is it, what we're trying to achieve. But if you have any other questions, I'll throw them into the chat and we'll answer them as we go throughout. But don't worry, we've done a webinar where we've gone really into more detail on, you know, number of sessions and all that kind of stuff and how we run it in the year and all that in the induction. So, but if you have any questions you, you have, please, guys, just throw them in the chat. We'd be happy to answer them as we go through. So hopefully that should give you kind of a whistle top of what's about the PDP program. It's very simple in nature. Girls come in, exposed to X number of sessions, exposed to festival day. They're improving, developing. Culture improving, developing. Go back to your clubs. Know more about it. Job done. And you know what? You've really engaged and, and, and probably developed that, that love for the game across the board. Okay. But who's involved in this? And, and, and I think this is very important from the PD perspective. There's a lot of people involved in this. For this to be really successful in your county, there's a lot of people involved. And hopefully tonight we will understand the importance of really thinking about what we're doing and planning it currently. So you have the county board, okay? You have the executive, the role they play. And I suppose I'll just share one or two stories that we had from last year in terms of, you know, the important role they play in, in this. You have your development officer and development committee. You're going to have your coordinators, guys. You're going to have coordinators across each age group. Now, just to let you know, every county is not going to be doing all age groups. I understand that. So some counties might just do under 15. Some might do under, or sorry, some might do under 13 only. Some might do under 13, 15. Some might do all three. But you do what's best for yourself. But if you're only doing a 13 every year, then I don't know are you really progressing. So you need to push the board out and challenge yourself where possible, if that's possible. You have your coaches, obviously. You've got the clubs. You've got the players. You've got parents. You have a lot of people involved in the PDP. So there's a lot going on for it to really work well. A lot of key stakeholders. And it's just important to, from a visual point of view to see this is just bigger. This is bigger than just the players. This is bigger than just the coaches. This is just bigger than the core. There's the clubs involved. There's parents as well. But what we're going after, and this is probably what we're going to try and sell tonight, and this is important. Anything you do in life, if you plan really well, and Kiran had a very good point. If you want to take a few weeks extra here now to get this right in your planning, take them. Take them. The program needs to be completed by the 1st of October. So you've loads of time. You have to complete, you, you complete maximum 12, 11 plus your festival day sessions. You don't have to do them all if you don't want to. Okay. But you, you, you need to probably just think about that. So good planning organization, get to really high quality coach experiences. And then your, your, your PDP plan will be very good. It will be very, very good. So just that's what we're going after tonight. But I like this visual because it kind of shows of how it looks in terms of structure and organization. So you have the county board as X-Men. And what I would say to anybody here tonight who's on the county board, um, where you're chairperson, secretary, uh, where you're involved, you need to buy into this. You need to support this. You need to support it. You need to commit to this. It can't be work in isolation where by the county board are here. Yeah, sure. Hey, listen, that's nothing to do with inter-county under 60. Don't worry about that. Okay. Development staff are going away and do it. There needs to be synergy. You need to understand this, number one, which is important. So if, they, if they're not here tonight, send them the induction webinar. Send them tonight's webinar. Get them to understand it. Have a chat about it. Okay. Because they need to the support and guide. You have your development officer and committee who are going to really lead it. They're the leaders. They're the ones who are going to you know, show the enthusiasm and energy to develop, develop this. If you're doing all three age groups, you're going to have one lead person across all, all three. If you're only one age group, you're going to have one lead person. So that's a real person that's going to be a coordinator. And I'll show you what the role of those people are in a minute. But then in some counties, like Cork, I know, would have multiple regions going on. They might have North Cork, South Cork, East Cork. It might be North Mayo, East Mayo, South Mayo. So you might have regional coordinators. So in North Mayo, we've, we've, we've Cloda. In East Mayo, we have Emily. In, in South Mayo, we have Aidan. So we have regional coordinators. So we have one coordinator of the age group, 
Then we have regional coordinators. And then we have the coaches. So I like, I like this as a visual to show you, this is not simple. This is not easy. This takes time. And this takes planning. Certainly takes planning. Um, and that's, it's going to take a body of people to make it really work. And it all depends. So it all depends on your resources and who you have. So you're going after that one to 10 coach ratio where possible, where possible in what you're really going after. So how many coaches do you need if you've got 60 players turning up to your session? And don't worry, our next webinar is a coaching session. So I'll I show you exactly how the coaching session should look like. Don't worry about it. That's another day's work. Let's focus on this, what we're trying to do. You need at least one female coach, I'd be saying. Let's go after that. Let's go after female coaches. Let's give them a responsibility. Let's give them an opportunity to coach. You have obviously your female liaison. So that female, you have to have a female presence in this setup. And ideally not parents as main coaches. So yes, parents might assist, but I would say if you're having lead coaches, I would say have that, um, you know, try not to have parents involved if possible. Now I know that's not always possible. And I always know if there's good parents there who understand what you're trying to achieve, have no hidden agenda, then of course they're good enough, 100%. Okay, so, but they, I would say they play a supportive role if possible, but every county is different to their development. I suppose just that, I, I hope that visual gives you an idea of what it looks like for it to be really successful in terms of what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and if you have any questions or queries, guys, Claude, if there's anything coming in there, uh, you, can, you can let me know before I move on. Is there anybody who wants to say anything on what I've said so far, guys, you can. But Claude, is there um, anything Yeah, well, in? I'll just jump in quickly. Um, firstly, there's loads of positives coming in. Um, John Callan uh, learned loads as a coach last year. Great experience for the girls. His daughter loved it. Um, the same in Limerick, the executive is very committed to the success. We have one issue here with a lack of knowledge at club level um, in regards to not being about winning. They don't realise that it's about improving all players. Yeah, um, and I think so. I, I suppose yeah, they're sorry, will you work away? No, yeah, sorry, Claire, what were you saying there? Sorry, but I could have crossed you by accident. Apologies. Um, no, I'm just saying the importance there is that there, there's good communication, that it does filter down to all the clubs. Ideally, you will have representatives from each club helping with the PDP. They'll be able to bring back the information then to each club um, and let them know exactly what it's about. Yeah, I think that it's, it's huge. Lads. We've got to keep, like, you're probably saying, I know there's probably a lot of people on here trying to go, ah, sure, we've heard this all before. I'm telling you guys, I've been involved in teams myself, coaching teams, even when I'm coaching teams myself, I say the same thing over and over and over and over again, because if it's important, you repeat it. And it's very important, in my opinion, that clubs really understand this. Even sh I have no problem, guys. I can share the slides. I know in Westmead last year, they asked me to do a presentation for them, for their clubs. Okay, no problem at all. Paula said, would you do it for me? No problem at all. Okay, or I can share the slides with you. If you need that to be done to get the point across, just explain what you're trying to achieve. They need to know why, what it's about, because they have their own perception of what it is. They'll assume it's this. Oh, that's only an intercounty thing. Or that's only this. Or that's not going to help us at all. So it's very important that we continually inform people of what it is. Use the video. Put it up in your social media. You know, use the presentation. Speak to clubs. Get them online. There's, it's great now to get people online. So I think, Claude, on that one, and I would say the development officer, development committee, even if you've got your coordinators or even the county board executive, play a real big role here to sell what is going on. And I just gave an example of Westmead Lash and what they did. They just did a separate presentation on it just to educate people of what it was. Um, is there yeah. one more or two before uh, we go? Yeah, there's just one or two more here, Will. Um, we have someone wondering, do girls participate in the PDP? Can they trial for the county the following year? 100%. 100%. Don't overthink, yeah, 100%. So uh, there's girls that have been here, of course they can. I know, I know there's, you know, there's no problem there. This is an X amount of program, you know, that's involved here. Of course they can, yeah, 100%, 100% they can, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and just as well, Will, there's uh, one person got negative feedback and um, when it was said maybe players who just don't make county squads to be exposed to good quality coaching, that it should be included for everyone. Yeah, 100%. It is included for everyone. Again, but every county is different. 
Okay, so you can you can tailor this to suit your county. So I'd be in my opinion, I just think if girls are involved in inter county squads, they're probably doing training. They're probably training at the moment. They're exposed to high level coaching. They're probably getting that high level coaching on a regular basis. And you know they'll probably be playing until April, May, June. So they 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 get that opportunity, to expose that environment. Okay, so let's let's try and can we can we give other girls an opportunity? But I do understand that every county is at different stages of development. So therefore, it might look the same. In one county is in another county so you do what's right for your county just please in consult us have a chat with us and we'd be more than happy to to link in with you and have a chat about that okay so again every county is in different stage of development but you could, i just say just think about that the girls who are involved the 30 girls who are involved inter county on the 14 16 and minor at the moment they're exposed to high quality coaching at the moment over a period of time so is do they need to be exposed to that again you know, again, you're not saying no to them, but they have got that opportunity to be involved. Now, I would say maybe the player, de player development program would be very good for the girls who don't get no game time. So they might be on an inter-county panel, and you know what, they're on the, their number 25 to 30. They didn't get no exposure, no games. Maybe this is a great opportunity to tell them, come on in here now, and you know what, you'll get a few opportunities in, in, in festival days and stuff. So again, it depends on your county, and we would be only happy to chat to you about your situation, and we'd advise you accordingly then, okay? So um, just be wary of that, that flexibility. Well, just sorry, one more there, Hal Bicloda. Uh, if a parent has come in ad hoc, you know, just they're supporting on a day or maybe the short of the coaches at a, any particular county, is it recommended that they have their vet and then safeguard in place? I'm, I'm going to come to that in a minute, yeah. I'm going to come to that in a minute, yeah. I'm going to come to that. So I'm going to, I'll go through all that now, and that hopefully answer all those, Kiran. Yeah. So I'll move it on. If there's anything else, guys, please ask the questions. But the question, what I would advocate tonight is, if you are unclear on anything, pick up the phone to myself, even Claude or Emily or Kiran or Sarah or Garo Balfi, who couldn't make tonight and since his apologies, or Aiden, guys, we'd be only happy to advise. Okay, so we'll move it on. And, I, and we'll, we'll just, uh, I'm just conscious of, uh, of your time. So what is the everybody's role? So everybody here, if you're involved with the player development pro program, your role is in accordance with LGFA best practice guidance to ensure that the goals and objectives specified for the program are accomplished. I'm going to be very honest with you. I heard the grapevine every now and then of the lads. Do you know what? We'll tell them what they want to hear, but we'll do it this way. You know, and look, that's okay too. Like if you, if you, I don't know, I don't know what you're going to achieve from that. I just don't know. But please, just be honest. I'd rather people be honest than just trying to tell us, you know, parky pies or trying to be clever. Look, this is what the program is. It's very simplistic in its, in its, in its uh, um, application. If you tell us what you want us to hear, I always believe that the, the wheel always turns. We'll find out anyway. So why don't you be honest with us from the very start? So that's why I admired Ma our Matt last night. I just said, you know, we're not ready for it last year. We're not ready for it. And they didn't. And now they're involved this year, which is fantastic. That's what I suppose just to have a bit of I suppose let's let's keep this integrity high and our honesty high in what we're trying to do so let's go through the roles okay so we have the development officer your role you're going to be the main contact for the county board you're going to ensure that listen these are the guidelines they're all on the PDP portal they're on the the, the various webinars that the objectives of the PDP are being met it's your responsibility as a development officer or as a part of the development committee that's your responsibility okay is to make sure the PDP are being met your job is to identify the right high quality people, coaches where possible. And we'll discuss that in a minute. The appropriate venues. Let's try what venues do we need to get. You're going to assist with identifying them. You ensure all coaches attend the relevant PDP workshops, webinars. You disseminate the relevant information. So your job is to really be an energizer, you know, to really push people to say, come here, come on, let's get on these webinars. Let's get to these in-person days. Do you know what? There's information coming through here. I distribute. So you're a real important person to that sense. Keep regular contact with clubs. And this is where I'm saying the development officer comes in really important and the development committee. Club contact, you can't underestimate it. Keep that regular contact. Every once in a while, open invite to clubs. Come on in, we'll give you an update on how things going. Even if five clubs turn up, it doesn't matter. If six clubs turn up, it doesn't matter. Keeping people informed is very, very important. And your job also is training gear, equipment, do you see the Galway crew? Geez, I love the jackets. They really looked well. I actually just spotted in the video. Vivian, I don't know if you're on here tonight, but I thought the jackets were really nice. If you don't mind sharing, how did you get them? Did you pay for them yourself, Vivian? Um, do you know, did the county board for him? Please, if you're on tonight, Vivian, please share how you actually funded those jackets because I thought they were really, really nice. So um, just there, that's the role of the county development officer. That's your role, guys. 
is to support. And I, and I, I go to that in a minute. So what's the minimum experience? And Kieran, you asked a very good question. What I was saying here tonight, what, what I'd be advocating, go for, reach for the stars. Your standards have to be very high. Don't accept mediocrity. Don't accept, ah, oh, we give it a go. This, oh, come on, if we're doing this, let's do it really, really well. So I'd be saying coordinators and coaches, what is it you need to have? You need to be a member of the club, guard of vetted, safeguarding. Now, if you're a coach in your club, you need to have these in your head. So this should not be anything new to you guys. You should have these. If you're a coach or involved in your club, then you should have all these three because you cannot coach unless you have all these three um, boxes ticked, okay? Desirable for the coordinator to have coaching qualifications. Desirable, but not probably the end of the world because a coordinator, you could have a very good coordinator who's just a great organizer, a great organizer, good planner, you know, good communicator, very good at IT, you know, so it's desirable if you have a, a coaching qualification. But in relation to the coaches, it's mandatory. And obviously we've given it, a, here is what we advise, you want to be a fundamental introduction coach, get a game at 13, 15, and you're going for your level one coaches under 17. That's only advice or what we feel is best practice. But once they have a coaching qualification, that's important, okay? So, and also I would say, if we're getting coaches involved, they need to have, they need to be coaching. They need to be coaching for at least the last three years. If we want to go to a higher level as coaching, they need to be actively coaching and they need to be coaching for the last number of years. So I hope that gives you a guideline of who you're going after. Coordinator, coach, minimum standards. These are our standards. These are our criteria. So Kieran, I suppose the question I'm asking is, if you do have parents, right? Okay. And they're hoping to help out, then they're doing a supportive role. They're helping with cones. They're helping with water bottles, but they're not coaching, Kiran. Okay, so they're not coaching. If they're helping out, there's no problem them helping out. Okay, but your coaches who are coaching needs to be have these. These are a minimum. Okay, these are a minimum. If you're coaching, if you're coaching girls, but if you have people supporting you, just come here, move a cone there for me, or fill the water bottles and stuff like that. Then that's a different story. That, that's just a supportive role. So I'd be saying you need to go after your high quality what you're trying to achieve. I hope that answers your question, Kiran. So, right, the skills of corn uh, uh, as um, for your, uh, what you call it, um, your, uh, what, you, what role is there? I'm talking about is your skills. You're looking at, um, you know, a good organizer, administrative, good at, at, at T skills, X and P man management skills, punctual. It's time to do the role, guys. And, and like, this is what you're looking for, for a coordinator. This is the type of person you're looking for. A person who's good organizer, good on the computer, good IT skills, you know, if we're looking to disseminate information, if we're looking for various forms to be filled out, then this person's on the money. They just get it done. They get it done. So you, you'll see those, you know those people, guys, and, and there's a lot of people who love that role, okay? So it's just that's the type of person you're looking for. Um, so what are the main functions of a coordinator? So this is if you're a coordinator. So if you're a coordinator of the under 13s, 15s, or 17, you're the main coordinator. You're the main contact with that county board officer, okay? You're the person that, so I'd be asking after this webinar, you know, ethos forms. So you're the person that's going to fill in the ethos form for your age group, your name, your contact number, your email. Okay. When you're doing your sessions, you're selecting any information that comes through. You're making sure all your regional coordinators and your coaches get all the information that no one's been left out of the loop, that everything that's been disseminating. You're the person that if you're going organizing a festival day, so you're doing a festival day, you're hosting one in your county, and you're inviting another three counties into you, you're the person that's going to come to us seeking prior approval. Is it okay, Claude, I will, if we host it on this date? Is it okay if we invite these three counties in? And the reason why we're at seeking prior, prior approval is when we're going to make sure the counties you're, you're inviting are actually participating in the program. And that's a key factor just to be aware of. Okay, again, database of players, who's attending, you know, you know, who's missing, just making sure we have a log of that. Um, as I said, guys, main, monitoring the program throughout, reviewing, so you're constantly contacting the, co the county development officer, county liaison with them, how are things going, how can we improve and what, how are things going? And as you said, the venues, you know, have we got the relevant gear? Are we where we need to be? That's your role as a coordinator. So your role is very administrative, just making sure everything's on song. And that's your role. Okay, making sure all the paperwork is submitted in time, making sure, Joe, uh, if there's support required for the coaches, read the co coordinators, you're there. You're, you're the lead, main link between the coaching, uh, the coaching um, coordinator and the, and the actual the county development officer. 
Okay, so who, what does that coach look like? So here we're going to the coach. So what kind of coach are you going after? And all I say is go after people who are good planners, who have an idea of what they're doing, who have coaching experience, who are enthusiastic, you know, and are there with no hidden agenda. That's important. Now they're there. They understand why they're there. They understand what they're about. They're there to develop the players. They're there to even to push the boundaries out for themselves. Okay. There's a real enthusiasm. Jesus, I've come across coaches. They might not be the greatest in terms of, uh, you know, technically, tactically, all this, are, but they have great enthusiasm. They make you feel like you're the best player in the world. Do you know what? And that's, that's what you're going after, a willingness to really kind of, you know, push the board out in terms of quality. So good planning, a good organizer, understands what they're trying to achieve, okay, will work with their fellow coaches, has a real enthusiasm about them, and understand what you're trying to achieve. That's the type of person you're going after, okay? So as I said, your function is to plan activities, and we have sample activities provided. We'll, we'll give you the, uh, a coaching webinar as it comes up. We'll go through what a structured session looks like. We'll go through all that. We'll have the in-person days. We now have two per province. We again, you know, help you in your role and, and achieve what you're trying to achieve. You're a major influence. You're the key cog. Trust me, the coach is the key cog in this. If a player can relate to you, enjoys you, enjoys what you do, I'm telling you, you're, you're on a winner. That's the key. The, the coaches are key to this. They're responsible for delivery all the sessions, working together as, as a team, and advising club coaches present and offering advice. So if they have a real positive environment, a positive experience, they'll go back and tell other coaches, show what, I was involved in that PDP last year. I liked it. It was very enjoyable. So John O'Callaghan in Cork is going, geez, I enjoyed last year. You know, I stay involved this year. I might help out somewhere else. So very important what we're trying to do and ensuring your training gear and equipment in place. Okay. So I suppose just to wrap up on what that looks like, the county board here tonight, if there's anybody here from the executive tonight, your role is to commit. Guys, we're doing this. We're doing this PDP program. We are clear what it's about and we're going to give the attention it deserves. And we're going to support anybody that gets involved here. Okay? We can't have isolation going on. We can't have the county board over here, the VEMDOFs over here doing their own thing with the, with the PDP and the inter-county scene over here doing that. We have to have real synergy in what's going on. So county board, please, guys. I've heard stories last year where they didn't want to know about it. That's, that's, it doesn't, you won't get the maximum out of it. It's important you commit. We're doing this. We support it. And we'll give it the time it deserves. If you're a development officer and committee, I'd say your role is to serve and support. I'm here to serve the core coordinators, serve the coaches. I'm here to support you. What is it you need? How can I help you? What can we do to support you? Okay, that's your role. If you're a coordinator, your role is to support the coaches, support each other, but also guide the coaches in what they're doing. You're there to support the regional coordinators and guide the regional coordinators. That's your role as a coordinator. And then the coach, your role is to guide players and enthuse them. That's your role as a coach. To guide the players to be trying to be the best they can be and to give that enthusiasm and motivation that they want to stay involved. So that's just an overview if I was to put into words what each role is. One won't work without the other. You all need to be working together in a synergy to make it happen. I'll go back to my original point. The planning here is key and the organization is important. Don't start it until you've clarity on where you're going with this, how you're going to go about it, when you're going to plan your sessions, when you're going to do them, okay? Take and bear in mind those festival days, which I'll show you in a few seconds, okay? So just very important, guys, just have clarity around that planning organization. Then you'll deliver a good program. And if then you review it and you take it from there. Just to finish off, guys, I, I suppose, you know, in terms of, just final things, transparency selection process. How counties select their people is, is, is up to yourselves. But going back to your point, Claude, earlier on, informing clubs is key here. We have online webinars now. Why you're doing what you're doing. Use the videos. Use the webinars. Use the slides. I have no problem sharing with you. You know, present to the clubs. Ask and answer any questions they may have. That's vitally important. So you need to know why you're doing what you're doing. If they've heard it before, do it again. You know, keep repeating the message. Keep repeating the message. Very important. You can decide you're going to go after people directly. I know good people. We always advocate, as our club outlined, we'd love to have one person involved from every club. But what we noticed last year is that, you know, that's, that's hard. That's tough. So I would say go after people. If you have 20 good people, 
you can cater for 200 people. You can cater for 200 players if we go by the one by 10 ratio. You can cater. So therefore, plan around how do we ensure you know, we cater for those 200 players. I, I know is that at least on here tonight, I know how many in Cork and GAD, maybe 300, 400 girls involved in the PDP program. But also, it's, it's, it's relative because Lisa and Cork, and, and the developer in Cork, they had 20, 30 people involved in the PDP. Tonight, they had 25 signed up. The point I'm making is, you the more people you have, engage them early, explain why you're doing what you're doing, the more the success of the program is. So I, I, I you know, so that's what we're going after, guys. If you have to go after people, go after people. Lisa, I don't know if you're there. Maybe you can share with the rest. Okay, well, how do you identify those coaches? Did you go to the clubs? Please share. Or John is on tonight. How do we how do we get the coaches in car? Have an open application process. Guys, give everybody an opportunity to be part of it. You know, give them the criteria. Do you meet that criteria? Okay, well, sign up. And do you know what? We look at the, the various names and we'll identify key people we want out of it. But at the end of the day, the decision of the county board and the decision of the county committee is final. So always put that on it. Because, you know, if you are doing a selection and you're trying to get people involved. But that's the point. Be transparent in what you're trying to do. Why you're doing what you're doing. If you go directly after people do that or go to clubs. If you have 10 people, you can cater for 100 people minimum or maximum. If you have 20 people, you can cater for 200 people, whatever. So again, guys, it's very important just have clarity around that. Okay. Again, I'm I'm willing to answer any questions. I'm nearly in now, so I'm, I'm I'll stop talking in a few seconds. So what I'm trying to say to everybody here is communication is key. I can't underestimate the importance of communication. Please, guys, continue to think about what is the PDP. If you're not clear tonight, go back to the induction webinar. Link in with one of ourselves. We'll answer it. Get your people together. Plan. Sit down. Go on our online webinar. What we're trying to do. Where's our venues? How many people can we cater for? How are we going to promote it? Deliver a good program and then we'll review it. I would advocate that the county board and the coordinators, in particular the county board officer, have regular meetings with your coordinators, maybe weekly, bi-weekly, just get them together. How did your session go at the weekend? Okay, so let's get people talking more regularly. So if we deliver something, like I'm tomorrow night, I'm in Leinster with Emily, we'll have a chat afterwards with the people who are involved, or maybe the ones in Munster, and just say, okay, well, how did that go? How can we improve on? What are the challenges? So we're going to Ulster next. Okay, well, what do we need to do better in Ulster? That's the idea of what we're trying to do. So use the conversational framework. What's the challenges? Don't spend the night moaning and groaning. What are the solutions? Okay, agree your actions, and let's go again. You're raising your standard all the time as a result. So the county board, of, I would say the county board officer, or it be your de uh, development officer, would facilitate that discussion. I can't emphasize enough. Going back to the slide earlier on, if you've done the 13s, done the 15s and the 17s, all work in isolation, I don't know when you will achieve what you want to achieve. I'd love to see that under 13, 15, and 17 coordinator getting together regularly online. How things go for you guys? How does it, geez, we have a chance with this. Oh, yeah, we're having difficulty here. If we have the regional coordinators all doing their own thing in an age group, then I don't know, are we maximizing what we're doing? Can we get the under 13 coordinator getting all those regional coordinators together once every now and then? How's it going for you guys? What, what can we improve on? So we need to continue synergy. It's not, let's not work in isolation. Let's work together on what we're trying to do. So before I, I think, yeah, before I finish off with one or two slides and I show the key dates, is there any questions or queries that are coming through there? And um, Claude, Emily, Kiran, Sarah, I'm sure there's a lot coming through. Please, guys, I'd be happy to, to answer where I can. Is there anything there? Um... Yeah, well, it's just far, just a wee bit of confusion. A bit. A new, a new rule came in about the County Development Committee. It's in place now, and the County Development Officer. So there's a bit of confusion there and the role each person takes. But in my eyes, the County Development Officer will would usually be the chair of the County Development Committee. Yes. So that's first thing I want to clear up. Second thing, the County Development Officer, they don't have to be the coordinator for this programme. They can get a good person from outside the county board that can coordinate this program that's good at, as you say, with them, IT, communicating, headhunting coaches, whatever the case may be. But they tie in with the county development officer and let them know what's going on. Because as we know, with the county development officer, there's a lot of other things 
uh, on their plate in terms of coach education, club support, uh, volunteer support. I know there's new roles for that there, but they have a lot of jobs to do uh, as a county development officer. So there's, as you said before, there's no red flag to say the county development officer can be the coordinator, but they don't have to be. No. If they can get a good person to fulfil that role, it takes the pressure off the county development officer. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, like in, in, in the development community, there's a player officer, there's a coach education, there's a you know a volunteer support okay. person, support, there's a, yeah. a growth and participation person. So they could be person. One of those, you know, it could come under the coach education remit. It could come under the player remit. So if one of those personnel in your development committee want to take the lead in this, then obviously, then guys, every county is different on who they want to lead the program. Uh, going forward once there's one person overseeing the shall I say the implement, implementation of it obviously we're developing committee to support you in that Claude if there's anything else coming through um, yeah well you might have pretty much covered these but just in case um, who selects the coaches how are players girls selected from clubs who makes contact with the coach, coaches for in-person sessions so Basically, guys, um, so the first question was, is what was the first question, Cloda? Just so I don't okay, who selects the coaches? So who said that's the county board, that's the county development committee, that's you know, the how you select them, that's that's the county board remit and the county development committee's remit to select the right people to uh, implement this. As I said, you can do it through um uh, Mike's Art Farm, uh, kind of an application process, you can go directly to people. So it's the county board, the county development committee's role in identifying the right people to be involved. How you select the girls, it all depends on how many people you have. So if you have 20 clubs and you've got, say, 20 coaches, you can cater for 200 girls. You might be sitting to every club. Every club, could you send in X amount of girls so that you think will be interested in this program? So you can facilitate the number of girls in each club based on the number of people you have in terms of number of coaches. OK, so that the number of girls that be invited from clubs is very much dependent on the number of resources you have. That's very important. Um, the In terms of the in-person days, that's again, the, whoever the main coordinators are, the under 13, 15, 17, I'll be informing the development officer and the county boards. We'll be, in the, as a, a provincial committee or provincial uh, development group, we'll be informed. As the dates are here, guys, okay? The coordinators informed our coaches of when these in-person days are on or the development committee, okay? So the, I would say the, the lead coordinator, so the lead coordinator for each age group, it's your, going back to your role is to inform people that these in-person days are on Let's get them there. I know in Cork, Lisa Walsh, who's the development officer, it would very much be an active role in ensuring that every coach across the board, coordinators are very much aware of these in-person days and these PDP days. But I'll be sending out emails to everybody who we've come in contact. But again, it's that development officer, development committee, the county board who select those coaches, but it's the coordinators who play a really active role and helping and achieving and getting these people to these in, in person days. That's vitally important. Okay. So, as you see here tonight, guys, we're on the PDP role description webinar. So, again, look back at it in your own time on the e learning portal. We've role descriptions. So, there's no problem, guys. Give a look at them in your own time and uh, you can go through them. And I will be happy to assist you where we can. We're going to have uh, how to coach our, our PDP coaching climate. So, what does a coaching climate look like? How does the group of coaches work together? What does sessions look like? We'll go through that with you at the next webinar, which is on February the 20th of, um, of, um, of February, as I said. Also then, we have a new webinar on the 27th of March. We did video analysis of the under 17. Um, so we're going to share the, the, the outcome from that from a coaching perspective and how does it influence our coaching. So we're going to share that research with you uh, on the, on, uh, in, in March. So look at the, these are the in-person days, guys. Again, give a look at your dates. I think the first one is, is Leinster on the on the 18th of February. So we'll be sending out, um, you know, Mike's our farm. We'll send out information these days to get as many people as possible these days. The more we interact as a group, the better these, these sessions will be, the better your programs will be. As I said, if your county program is good, then that's the main thing. That's the most important thing, okay? So we're going to have these contact sessions. These are going to be up the e-learning portal. Don't worry. We'll have them for you on the e-learning portal. You can download them. And these are the, all the dates are all agreed. So give a look at your own, um, should I say, province and when they're coming up and you, you know when they're to plan around as well. The provincial dates are there as well, guys. As I said, when you're planning, it doesn't have to be the, should I say, the end of your program. 
it can be at the middle of your program. So just, you can work around that depending on your own county and where you're at in terms of your own planning, okay? I just want to be very, very, um, shall I say, clear on that. Our national day, possibly Abbottstown, all depends in the number of venues or pictures we've available to us, but it's Tuesday the 11th of July is our under 17 day. That's a national day uh, at the moment bec uh, because we're try still trying to, I suppose, increase the numbers involved there, okay? So um, to finish up, and then I'll answer any questions before we, we wrap it up then. To finish off, guys, just so you're clear in what we're trying to do is there's a lot of people involved. You know, if everybody's involved, they need to know why, what it's about and what they're trying to achieve. Everybody aware of your common goal. Please, guys, put serious effort into your planning. Please put serious effort into that. Prepare accordingly. So we have the resources and the venues and where you're going. Have clarity around that in your planning. Deliver as best you can. Have that regular communication throughout. Keep meeting each other online. How are things going? What's your challenge? What's the solution? Agree action points. And then obviously at the end of the program, we'll review it. So your next step for you is, I'm going to be sending out the MyStar form. Who's your coordinator? Please, guys, don't fill out an ethos form if you haven't started or you haven't a clue where you're going to get. Only submit the ethos forms when you've clarity around your planning and where you're going, okay? And then we'll take it from there. Um, they need to be submitted prior to the commencement of your program which is very, very important, okay? Um, uh, attend the in-person coaching days, please, guys. Um, that's very important. It's very important that, you know, people, we meet them in person at the provincial days be, and with the online future webinars coming up, the more we engage, the more we meet, the better we do going forward, okay? Um, so our next webinar is on the 20th of February. Uh, please, guys, again, we'll send out the detail, the links to everyone. That'll look at the coaching session. What does that look like? And we'll go into more detail on that. Um, guys, I don't know, is there any more coming through before before we can uh, we, we'll wrap up this evening? But is there any questions or queries coming through? Please ask. Everyone coming through the next year. Um, well, I think they're all pretty much answered. And thanks to Aidan and Kieran, they were uh, replying to people individually. John Callahan has a good message in if people want to have a read of it, how they worked in Cork. So... That's a success story in Cork, if, if people want to read through that as well. Very good. And last, my old, our old mate Frank has been appointed as a model in development officer. Frank, don't panic my old party. Listen, he's right. Yes, we're trying to fish a wide net with it, as, as we said before. And if he opens it up, I know he's panicking. He might be the only uh, person from uh, all the counties on the call of Nightwell. Uh, if you open it up and you don't have enough coaches in place and 150 years turn up, get your house in order first, get your coaches appointed and selected, and then from that, you can base your numbers, right? We can cater for 50 years, we can cater for 80 years. So to every county out there, start recruiting, start headhunting, start talking to people, lift the phone, don't send emails with them, you know, it's hard to turn down a phone call, say, would you be interested? It's not a big commitment, you know, we're trying to help you, it'll help your club. It's going to help our county going forward. So, Frank, what I would say, have a chat with people around you, people that in your development committee. Start talking to teachers, maybe within people who are out there who have an interest in this type of development role. That it's not a big commitment. We're not going to train for the All Ireland in, in June this year or July this year. So, do do your homework first, Frank, and everybody else on the call, and you will get there. It's slow baby steps, and and people will. I, I guarantee if you if you left the phone call, we can all ignore an email. We all know it. If, if someone left the phone and he says, Karen, I need a bit of support and help in doing this, it's hard to say no to any any person out there. And every county is different. Every county is a different stage of development. You base your planning around your own resources. So get clarity around your resources first before you start planning where how you're gonna are you gonna go regional? Are you just gonna run one venue in your county? Again, go the induction meeting, actually, the induction webinar, Frank. Give a look at that because we go into more detail on those aspects as well. So if you get time to give a look at that, please do. I remember, um, I don't need to remember in Belly Fahan with the Gator for Girls, we had, I think it was about 10 coaches and we had eight stations set up and we had about 150 girls turned up on the night. Never forget it. But because we had the eight, the 10 coaches, because we had stations set up, it worked really, really well. So I always believe you can cater for big numbers if you've got the right number of coaches and you have the right setup and everybody's clear on what you're trying to achieve. 
Uh, everything's possible. But again, like you're on, said, Les, please contact us individually if you need to, to get things clarified. We'd be happy to help out where we can, 100%, 100%. Okay, Claudia, is there anything else? Or do, do, do we really do okay? Yeah, that's everything pretty much sorted. Uh, there's one person there who won't make the Ulster Day on the 11th of March, but as far as I know, there will be two in-person days, Kieran, won't there? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. There'll be different folk. And as I said, Kieran, they have no problem. If you want to go to another province, guys, no problem as well. But on that day, anyway, there will be, there'll be notes we can send out. The actual the 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 games and the delivery on the day to all the participants from Ulster or whoever signed up, you can give me access to all them in Ulster and anybody who who have signed up the program. Okay, guys. So the e learning portal, everything's up there. If you have any questions, contact any one of us at any time, and we're here to support you in trying to achieve it. I know it is, it's very challenging, so let's keep working together on what we're trying to do. So that's based on that note. On that note, I say thank you very much to everyone for taking your time and being here this evening. Uh, we'd like to keep these webinars to an hour. So thank you for your time. Again, the very best of luck. We'll be in touch with you again in the coming week. And we'll be back on the, I think it's the 20th of February with our next webinar, folks and the coaches. Okay. So on that note, thank you very much, everyone. And I'll just stop the record.